My name is Nathan Lim, and welcome to the Sports Junkyard. I have no idea if you are one of two or 20 people listening to this, probably the former, but I do thank you for uh, your time and your ears. I know it's a bit of an odd time to start recording a sports podcast. The nation's uh, in lockdown, all sports been cancelled, and I have resorted to watching replays of the 2015 Rugby World Cup. But sport is under pressure in New Zealand. And I'm not talking just internationally, I'm talking at club level. Today on the Sports Junkyard, I'm speaking to former All Black Peter Alatini. Alatini's played 17 tests for the All Blacks between 1999 and 2001, and he's currently the director of rugby at Pakaringa United Rugby Club. Pakaringa is one of the largest clubs in New Zealand. They have, at the start of the 2020 season, they had uh, 500 junior and just under 200 senior players. And obviously, all rugby is on hold for the foreseeable future. Peter, thank you for joining me. What does it mean for a club when you don't have players walking through your doors and out onto the field? <laughs> it means there's no club, brother. <laughs> um, yeah, that's, that's been the question that um, myself and, and just working with our staff is going through at the moment. And, and really, we're just we're now in, in that space, having no members come through. What does that look like for us as a club? So uh, that's where that's what we're trying to find out over the next week. I know myself, I'm just concentrating hard on what I can do at the moment, support the, the coaches that we have got, first and foremost, and then probably moving on to that is, is check on each coach, making sure, and, and myself, is where our players are at in terms of mentally and, and, and their own situation and spine first before even thinking about, about the footy side. Backing on that is, uh, for myself is... Working what programs we have got, you know, still to really work on. For me, it's really how can I, you know, upskill my coaches to be better. How can I have a plan for my players in place during this time, so when they come out, to not only come through but also their development plan going forward. What is worst case scenario? Worst case scenario is no rugby for this year at least. Obviously meaning no rugby, that, that gives us probably no members in terms of those big days, having Tuesdays, Thursday trainings, no, no Saturday gatherings as well. So that'll be huge for the club, and especially us as staff as well, because you know, none of those functions and what have you happening <laughs> means there's no money coming in for the club. Well, yeah, and I suppose what we're looking at here is if the season is cancelled, roughly 25,000 uh, schoolboy players are going to be affected. How are you going to not only re-engage those school leavers who missed out on their first 15 year to come back and play for the club and also maintain your current player base? Mate, I think the biggest thing I've probably underestimated as well is the online interaction. And for us, not so savvy IT fellas, probably is a good time. And it's probably where all those kids are at at the moment in terms of schooling. So for us, it's probably diving in and finding out how we can remain in contact in that space and in terms of do how we can do some stuff online with them, keeping them engaged. And what we have in, in place, I suppose, is going to be huge for them to really stay engaged or, or connected to. And then hopefully at, at some point in time coming out of it, it's, it's really because you'd be hoping by then that they'll be firing and ready to go so that we're actually ready for that coming out of, of this period. Yeah, and I, I suppose if we look at, at the social aspects of clubs, clubs are built on social exchange. If, if we had conducted this interview a year ago in the club rooms, you would have heard whistles, uh, the cheering of the crowd, the clinking of drinks at the bar, um, conversations, laughing. Right now, there's, there's just none of that, and there's not going to be any of that for quite some time. What does what that, that social aspect mean for a club's ability to survive? Well, look, we're, we're social beings and, and the rugby club is, is that for us. You know, our local rugby club has been that for uh, us growing up for a long time. You know, as, as a kid, well, you see it from our junior space, uh, under fives all the way up to your premier team. It's been part of our life to have be associated to a club, associated to playing sport and, and rugby. 
and, and the different forms of rugby nowadays to make adaptable to, to the kids to really have a, another aspect in their life outside of what they may be in terms of schooling or work to have social engagement with, with people. Can you see this having any long-term impacts on the club? We're really digging in back to the unknown at the moment, really, eh? and I think that is quite scary for us all as a as a club. I think it's we'll, we'll be just like like businesses, mate. If we we don't collate and, and, and really try and again engage and still connect with our people, building building with our people will be uh, will be disastrous, and, and it'll, it'll, it won't exist anymore. But I feel that's where Pukaranga is probably, a, you know, and any other bigger clubs we have stable members there's, there's still a strong stability of support within the community that enjoy the club which will always be there it's just a matter of always retouching base to keep those guys engaged so they are the ones who also keep driving and helping us making sure that we get these members back you talked about the support in the community for the club which is there but rugby is a declining sport in new zealand I have a, a stat from a, a school sports census uh, done in, in t- released in 2019, and that was um, that rugby union has seen a 12% decline in its player base over the or between 2014 and 2018, and that includes a 6% drop in 2018 alone. Why is this happening, and what are Pakaranga doing to combat this? So for us, we've been working out, like I said, with AIU, and we understand. There's always going to be the client, but what we're trying to do is how we come up with different forms of the game to make it easier for people to play, for the kids to enjoy. And you're seeing all these good sports in terms of all rep programs getting taken. The focus on participation is huge more, but it's just getting that balance between that as well, because what you're finding as well is that you don't want to you know, piss off your members that really want that competitive side engaged. It's just a matter of controlling that space in terms of getting the balance right between participation you know, and high performance as such. So, so a big part of my space is really working hard with our colleges and, and what their program looks like, and then how I can help in terms of, it's more that I'm going with coaches. That's where I'm finding space where, where we can help more of between us and the union. Because if the kids have a better experience with their coaches, and that's what's going to prolong them to, to keep playing, the kids get bored, mate. <laughs> you get bored quick of the game. And if you don't, one, get them into to a space where they're really developing, they're really enjoying it, you know, they're not getting out and getting bashed every time. Because that's, that's the only way they'll come keep coming back to, to the game. That was Peter Alatini. Thank you so much for joining me in the junkyard. There is so much more to come. Stay tuned, and I'll catch you next time.